Hi there, I'm Danny Gregory and this is Draw With Me, a hopefully weekly event here on YouTube. It's been relatively weekly. It is weekly this week and uh, I hope that it will be next week. But anyway, let's not worry about that for now. Um, the idea behind Draw With Me is that we spend half an hour or so drawing together. It's not a drawing lesson per se, it's not uh, even really a drawing demonstration, but it's just an opportunity to get together with other people who are also drawing inclined and to say to yourself, you know what, I'm going to make this a drawing date. I'm going to make a date with myself to say that I will draw for half an hour on Thursday at noon Eastern Standard Time. So um, today we are going to draw what I call a memory map, which is to say we're going to try and construct a map of some place. It could even be actually an event or experience, if you wanted to, from your past. And we're going to, um, you know, make stuff up. And I'll show you uh, what I'm making, and hopefully eventually you'll want to show me what you're making. The, the idea behind each week of Draw With Me comes from a list of drawing prompts. And as you can see down below, right here is a URL, freedrawingprompts.com. And you can just go there and you can download a really nicely illustrated list of 101 things to draw. It's a useful list to have if you're ever thinking, uh, just don't know what to draw today but you can. So um, this list is one that I kind of randomly pick a number from. And today's thing I think is number, is it number 70, I want to say? I've forgotten already, but it's to draw a memory map. So anyway, let me, as you prepare yourself for that, as you delve deep into your memory and uh, extract what you might want to draw, um, I will meanwhile prattle on about something else. I wanted to talk about an experience I had last night that was really very nice. So last night, um, I had a few friends come over for dinner. And uh, my wife, Jenny, made us some Indian food. I was meant to help her. But unfortunately, I had to spend the afternoon with my mother at the Pakistani consulate here in New York, helping her to arrange a visa because she's been invited to speak at the Lahore Literary Festival. And uh, that required her getting this visa and us spending the afternoon dealing with Pakistani bureaucrats. So meanwhile, my wife was cooking up some chicken curry and some cauliflower curry and some other stuff. So it was a very sort of curry-oriented afternoon for both of us in the sense that Pakistanis also make curry. Meanwhile, um, our guests showed up the first of which was my old pal, Tommy Kane, who I'm sure you've heard me speak about before. Um, and he and I have known each other and drawn together for many, many years. And his wife, Yoon, then joined us. And uh, she's a knitter more than a drawer. And then um, our final two guests were my friend Veronica Lawler, who has taught with us a number of times at Sketchbook School, is an amazing illustrator and uh, teacher teaches here at uh, Pratt and um, I think at Parsons, two universities here in New York. And um, she was joined by her house guest, our friend Lapin. Lapin, French for rabbit, is um, an illustrator who is French, as his name would suggest, but who lives in Barcelona. And um, Lapin is just a drawing maniac. We saw him this summer uh, when we were at the Urban Sketching Symposium in Amsterdam. And what Lapin loves to do, let me show you this, he loves to, when we have a dinner party, um, he draws the people at the dinner party. So let me show you this. This is the drawing that he made of us. And you can see um, from left to right, there's Veronica Lawler, there's Yoon, there's me in the middle wearing a great turtleneck and looking... I don't know, I have blue eyes in Lapin's view of me, which is less than accurate. Next to him is my wife looking slightly bad-tempered, and Tommy Kane with 
who's sporting a nice beard these days. And then Le Pen also likes to do these little kind of random snippets from the conversation. He draws them in there um, as little balloons. And then he had each of us sign our names by our drawing. So, um, you know, I've been drawn by Le Pen a few times so far. It's always a great experience. I always look slightly different. Maybe I've changed. But um, we made a film that you might have seen when Le Pen did a course with us called uh, Urban Sketching. And we had a big dinner party in Barcelona at his house, where he had it, and we filmed it. And he invited a whole bunch of other artists and illustrators. And as they had this beautiful dinner, they drew each other, and that was part of the film. So um, I love this class that we made with Le Pen. It was really great, because it, it um, was about all the different things that he does. And he is... Uh, he is an urban sketcher and has drawn all over the world, but he also draws um, people in really interesting ways. He tends to do these weird distortions. He also uh, draws vehicles. And that's what I want to show you next as a m way of insp inspiring you, is Le Pen gave me this book that he has just most recently done. He's done a number of books, but this one is called Carnet de Zinc, written, as you can see, by Capitaine Le Pen. Now, Capitaine Le Pen is not, um, it's not a joke. He actually is a captain in the French Air Force. Strange, to, strange as that may seem. Um, if you know of Le Pen, you don't really think of him as being a military man. But actually, Le Pen is, um, he's a licensed pilot. It has been since he was 17. And his father worked as um and not an engineer, what's the term? A mechanic for planes. And so Le Pen made this beautiful book drawn um, in around the world at museums and uh, airports and stuff like that, but just about his love of planes. Really, really beautiful drawings. And, you know, Le Pen has several things worth noting. One is how beautiful his drawings are. But also you'll notice that um, he does the same thing with these little call-outs. He has great handwriting. He uh, draws in pen, and then he, draw, he paints in watercolor. And then he uses a white gel pen to do these kind of highlights and stuff. And um, he always draws on ledger paper. All of his books... All of his sketchbooks are made with this ruled paper. And he collects, his, collects, he used to collect actually these old ledger books. Now I think he has them made for him. And so his sketchbooks are again all made of this paper. So that's kind of one of his hallmarks of his, of his style, which I think is really cool. Very distinctive. And uh, he is, he is just a really versatile artist. Some of you may have been to SketchCon and met him there. Um, he's a he's a soft-spoken guy, but uh, he and he he the reason he's here is because he just finished doing a tour with uh, this tour group called Blue Walks that takes artists on tours with oh it takes people with an artist on tours and he just came back from. Where was it? He was in Barcelona. He was somewhere else in Spain, leading a group of people um, and teaching them to draw as they as they toured Spain, which is pretty cool. I'm actually looking forward to doing something like that myself in the near future. So that's something to look forward to as well. Drawing and traveling together are great fun. So this book, um, if you go to my blog, there's a link to where you can get this book, or you can just search La Pan artist or something like that yeah and I think I think he sells them I, he, he self-produced this book and he did it because he is um, he's doing some new thing of a Bob with the um, with the French Air Force and uh, that was his reason for doing this book I think it was to kind of show them what it might be like to do a book about the plane so I think he is he's actually going to I think he's telling me it was like some Air Force base that's going to be decommissioned and he's doing a bunch of drawings there. If you like planes, this is full of them. He also has a lot of other books that he's done about different cities and uh, facsimiles of his sketchbooks. 
He's a really, really cool artist. If you don't know about him, I urge you to find out more. And uh, if you want to, take, take his class with us. All right, onward. We're now going to... Um, let me just get rid of this. We're now going to start working on our memory map, right? Because that's, that's what we're here to do. So, um, again, so hopefully you've gotten your drawing prompts. I can get rid of that. You, if you want to share what you do with me, use hashtag draw with me and put that on social media. Okay. Business done. Let's, oh, so here we go. I want to go back to my other camera for one second just to show you something else, which is what I'm going to be drawing. So I decided I'm going to draw... I don't know if you can see this. There's a little bit of reflection on it. This is the house I lived in with my grandparents in Pakistan. I was talking about Pakistan before. Well, I lived in Pakistan when I was a little kid, and uh, for about a year and a half, I lived just with them. And this it was the house we had. It had this beautiful garden, and um, my grandparents were doctors, and this part of the house was their uh, um doctor's office and this was the house and my room was actually up there and then it was surrounded by this big garden so what I wanted to do for my memory thing was to see how much I can remember about what it was like there and what the kind of layout of the place was so that's what I'm going to be focusing on so think about what you want to do I mean do you want to draw I don't know um what it was like to walk to school, or do you want to draw your own grandparents' house, or do you want to draw, I don't know, it could be something from your adult life too. Uh, it's up to you, but, but the idea behind a memory map is, is it's not like a, it's not Rand McNally, it's not Google Maps, you don't have to be super accurate, you just have to kind of use your memory to see how much you can capture and take a walk around it. What I liked about my grandparents' house, I mean, there were many things, but ever since I've been an adult, whenever I felt like it was hard to fall asleep or I was stressed in some way, I would walk around their garden in my imagination. I would try to remember as many details as I could about, um, about what it was like. So it's a kind of a soothing, relaxing thing to do. So today is drawing kind of drawing it's really up to you how how intensively your drawing is and how much you want to just focus on on remembering and figuring out how to depict it i also happen to love maps i don't know about you um uh, i love maps i think that they're really cool i've always loved them I, I, last week i talked a bit about maps that i remember from being a kid things like the end papers of books that i loved like wind in the willows um we talked about uh um the House at Pooh Corner, um, Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit. Tolkien drew really nice little maps in there. Um, but just a lot of kids' books had those kind of end papers that were maps. And, and I remember loving those and studying them. And it was really cool to like follow along on the journey. So I've always loved maps, and I also like to make them. So that's what I'm going to be doing. So, all right, y'all. We have people from all over the map here today. Here's Roxy from Winnipeg and Na in an RV in the desert. That's exotic. Um, Dot in Frona, Missouri. Susanna call, coming in from Argentina. Um, Elishiva, is that how you pronounce it? In, in the Netherlands. And uh, Tone in Norway. Peggy in Switzerland. Sylvie in Paris. Barbara in California. Janice in Virginia and a lot of other folks. So we're all over the map as is appropriate. So I'm going to draw my iPad today. Let me just plug it in and uh, switch to that. Here I am. That's not my iPad. That is my cluttered desk. There we go. iPad. Okay. Let me make myself smaller so I don't hog the scene. Um, yeah, so, so I'm going to draw on the iPad just because I like to. Got a problem with that? I'm sorry. Some people complain about me drawing on the iPad, but uh, that's okay. You know, to each his own. We all have different things we like to complain about. So, anyway, here we are. Okay, I'm taking myself back to Pakistan. Um, 
So one thing I can remember quite vividly was the front lawn. The front lawn was kind of a square, and um, it was a square grass. It was sunken down, sunken down. Um, whoops, sunken down about less than a foot. And um, it was just grass. But the, on top of that grass, there were, as I remember it, there were a couple of, um, of little gardens within a garden. Uh, my grandmother, she had, she, she had green, a very green thumb. And she loved all kinds of flowers. And she had, she had a little a bed over here that was that was all cactuses and there was another one over here I think from what I remember small one I remember I remember this particular cactus garden this one over here in the corner um, because my grandfather who at the time was a he was exactly the age I am now he was just which is kind of depressing to think about of course but he was he, walking along this path and I think he was like talking to our dog and he he missed his footing and he fell into this cactus patch and these were big cactuses like trees and uh, I remember him having various thorns in his head and he had a, he had a bald head I wonder where I got that from yeah he had a bald head and uh he suddenly had, instead of hair, he had little cactuses, cactus spi spines. Yep, that's my memory of that cactus garden. Um, and so there's this walk, there was a path that went all the way around it. Kind of a light gray, I'm going to make that. Yeah, so there's a path that went around it. As I said, it was set down. So the grass, imagine the grass being lower. And um, what else can I remember about it? There were, oh yes, there were trees. There were some trees here, and they were called frangipani trees. I don't know if you've ever heard of these kind of trees. They're beautiful with white flowers. And um, yeah, they had white flowers. And then... Over here, can't really see that. Over here, there were topiary. There were topiary round ones and square ones. And there were some down this way as well. Topiary. Hedges, shaped hedges. Some shaped like teardrops, and some shaped like um, cubes. Or round cubes, like like a yeah, like a tube with a top cut off. Yeah, I had forgotten about those things completely. Um, and then there was like a low hedge that ran along the edge of the of the wall. Did it go all the way around? I don't really remember. I do remember there was somewhere there was like a little staircase that led down to it. I'm, I'm going to say it was over here. I don't think that's entirely accurate, but yeah, let's say there was that there. That's what I can remember about their front lawn. Yeah, I think that'll have to do. Um, then this part here was the driveway. And it led into the driveway started over here. And um, it led to a green gate, which was right here. There's a gate. Okay. Now, now it's starting to come back to me a bit. And over here, there was more of this sort of hedge that ran along the edge of the, of the path. And this whole area 
was a rose garden. I never promised you a rose garden, and yet I had one. And my grandmother's rose garden was designed to look like a Persian rug. It had flower beds that were somehow like a Persian rug. I can't remember exactly how it worked, but I always remember her saying that, that that was her design. So let's just say for the sake of representation, it was something like that. And then at the back, there was a high wall that had creepers going up it. Uh, ivy growing up this wall. I'll represent that with some kind of darker line. So this is sort of the front entrance that you would come in. And from what I remember, there was also a driveway that kind of led up to the gate, and it had... No, it wasn't like that. It was round, like this. A round driveway. And in the middle of it, there was another garden. Yeah, so it's like that. Imagine that's the gate. I'm just going to indicate this is a gate here. And in the middle of this garden, so in the middle of this driveway, there was another garden. And this garden, oh no, I've crashed. Um, in the middle of this garden, there was, there was a topiary of a peacock. Right there, there's a topiary uh, that was really tall, as I remember. And I mean, I was pretty short. I was like nine, but I do remember that peacock topiary is so cool. All right. And then I'm going to indicate this little, that there was a wall back here. And then here's the house. I figure out how to draw the house, because I don't think I'm going to get into the details of the house, but I'll just indicate it for now that it was sort of like this, and it was like that, and like that. Okay. I'm going to make the whole thing smaller, because now I'm realizing that this is actually a bigger thing than I remembered it being, or that I planned for it to be. Um, hmm. Yeah, so those were roses in here. Let me indicate that these were roses. So there are roses in here. And when I say it was a Persian rug, it actually looked more like a Persian rug than I've indicated it to be. So let's just add some, I think there was a bed there and a bed there. Sort of vaguely Persian rug-like, but anyway. Um, what else? There was, right here, there was an arch. So imagine an arch. And that arch had nests of what were called a weaver bird that hung on this. And then the back here was another lawn. It's a lawn. And that lawn was actually where me and my friends would play cricket. So it was kind of a, a lawn that, as you can imagine, got a little messed up as a result of our boyish activities. Remember it had a wall, this, this wall of, of these, what I called creepers before. I remember them distinctly because there we were nine years old and looking for trouble. And we would sometimes pick twigs off this wall of hedge or creepers, ivy, and we would smoke them because they were hollow. We would get matches, we would smoke them or pretend that they were cigarettes. I don't really remember much more besides that. They didn't get us high or anything like that, and they certainly weren't like real smoking, but we were pretending to be smokers, so that was pretty cool. Um, what else do I remember from the back? The back. Boy, it's tough. Oh, yeah, so, okay, so there, there were these steps here because there was a, a veranda back here. Veranda. And uh, over here was a carport. This house is big. I showed you the picture of it. It was really big. Um, and so I, I'm kind of getting a little lost in the details. But okay, so there was definitely a path that went behind it. 
and there was a vegetable garden. I think the vegetable garden might have been back here somewhere. I think I'm going to indicate it was here. I'm not sure if that's correct. Now this house, by the way, still stands, and in fact my mother, when she went to Pakistan about four or five years ago, she actually stayed in this house. My grandparents haven't lived there for 50 years. They're both dead. But somebody else does live there, and this, these people were so honored for some reason that my mother was coming that they invited her to stay, and she ended up staying there for a while, quite a while. Kind of an embarrassingly long amount of time, but anyway, so I think that there's a vegetable garden there. And I remember it had little kind of houses, not a house, but it had like a shed that I really was envious of. I really had this fantasy about having my own shed for some reason when I was nine. I just wanted to have like a little building of my own. So that was, I think, back there. And there was also back here, there was something that was a well. And this well was like really dangerous. Um, Janice, I think the background is, noise is my my wife talking to our cleaning lady. So she's here today. That's why it's kind of noisy. So yeah, so that's the well. So I'm going to write. I should. That's another thing is I could go down and I could write things. Um, I might do that. I might write. Uh, some, um, I could write like a, a bit of a explanation. So, um, yeah, and whatever a vegetable garden. Um, gate. So hopefully you're right, you're annotating your map as well. And writing down what you remember. Yeah, the carport. Report. What else can I remember? Yeah. Yeah, so this this whole area back here, there were some other outbuildings here. Boy, my it's amazing, isn't it, how much you can not remember. <laughs> there are times that I'm really really clear on how this whole deal worked and then there are other times where I'm just like completely lost um, oh I know this is here okay this is where the well was yes it was back here sorry what are you doing with your with your exercise what it t share with me what you're thinking that's the well that makes much more sense okay yeah and then there were this Yes, I think the vegetable garden was back here. All right. Is this really dull to you? I find it sort of interesting, but... But, um... Maybe, maybe your memories are taking you to other interesting places. Yes, hi, Gail. Um, we are... We are... Working on memory maps. Um... Yes, this is where that vegetable garden was. This is all completely wrong. But what was there? Hmm. That's the thing, is like they're kind of blank areas, almost like, you know how when you look at like f maps made in like the 15th century and there would be blank areas because they were unexplored? That's what this is a bit. It feels a bit like that. Because I do remember this. There was this, there was a, um, a, not a compost heap, but yeah, a compost, like a big, um, 
hole in the ground that that was filled with like clippings and stuff like that. And I used to run and dive into it. And I would get into all kinds of trouble because it was, because of course it was like this deep pit filled with thorns and uh, twigs and weeds. And I would sometimes get, um, you know, potentially get impaled on hidden things. Um, okay, there's another... There's another part of the building here, which was where... So my grandparents, living in Pakistan as they did, it was completely customary to have servants. I mean, it sounds a little Lord Fauntleroy-ish, but we had servants, and um, they lived in part of the house. And, and in fact, my friends, my best friends at the time, were their dad was a servant. He was the, like the called the bearer, which is sort of like the butler, I guess. Well, we didn't, he wasn't really a butler, but... Um, and they lived here in this part. Nimu and Papa were their names, my, my friends. And um, they were the guys who I would play soccer with, and um, they were really my best friends for that port part of my life. And their grandfather also lived over here grandpa. And the chauffeur lived up here, the driver. And that's where the cars were parked, too. We had two cars. It's weird. It's It was a strange kind of childhood experience, because I went from there to living on a kibbutz. And a kibbutz, you know, in Israel, where you Basically, my mother was picking grapes, and my stepfather worked in the orange orchard. So we went from, uh, or at least, and, uh, now I, I didn't live with them when I lived with my grandparents. It's a complicated story, but um, they, yeah, so we went from living in this house with these servants to living on a kibbutz and being basically like manual laborers. And uh, that was our house. That was our kind of scene. So... This is what I remember <laughs> about this scene. So, yeah, um, this is so. This is the compost, and yeah. So it was. It was sort of like this little kind of like village almost. So there was, there were um, Nimu and Papa and Shamsu, who's the bearer, and his wife. No, yes, no, Kamru. Kamru and his wife, and then Shamsu lived over here, and the driver and the grandfather. So that's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then me, ten, my grandparents, eleven, twelve. So twelve of us lived there, and then there was also two gardeners who worked on this garden. They didn't live at the house, and a cook. So it was sort of, I mean, it wasn't exactly Downton Abbey by a long stretch. Um, and we also had a what was called a sweeper, who was basically like a guy who'd clean up. And then there were also um, two or three people who worked in the lab. Uh, the, the, my grandmother ran the lab in the, in the medical um, operation. And then there was another doctor, Dr. Iqbal. And um, yeah, it was a lot of people, a lot of people. So yes, so, so this, I, I'm, and then, I was, okay, one more thing. So on the outside of this, out next door to where we lived, there were these open fields. And those open fields on this, these sides had what in Pakistan were called bullocks or oxen. And um, those oxen were just, it was like farm animals, basically. So we, here we are living in this house, which was, as you could tell by that photo, was kind of modern looking. But we were surrounded by these dusty fields, and the oxen would produce dung, and the dung, the people who looked after the oxen would make the dung into patties, into these round discs, and they would dry them in the sun, mixed with straw, and they would use them as fuel. So all against the walls were like these piles <clears throat> of these dung patties. And crows. I remember a lot of crows. To this day, when I hear the sound of crows, it takes me back to this time in my life. 
Um, and then on this side over here, there was another house. I've never been in that house. I don't know anything about it. And over here, there was another field. Oh, no, that's right. There was, yeah, there was a hedge there. Oh, yes. Now I remember. Okay. So there was a hedge over here, but there was also a secret passage that went back here and that led to water cisterns. These things were, for some reason, water was gathered and they would use that to water the plants with. Something like that. You know, it's another thing is like when you remember these things when you were a kid, it's like there's certain things that take on huge amount of importance, like the well. The well was this building, and it wasn't even a building, it was like a lid on a structure, and I was always told, like, if you fell down this well, you would die. I was always terrified of that. I would, I would feel myself being pulled towards this structure, thinking, oh no, what if I accidentally flung myself down the well? What if I, what if I kind of lost my mind and I unlocked this huge steel lid and I slid it apart and slid it to the side and I plunged down the well and, and died all by accident. Like, what if that happened? Like, I've got to make sure that doesn't happen. It was just like this, this the fact that this thing was there, that it was, it was some like tremendous appeal that it had, tremendous kind of magnetic power, the, the power to like go and like fling myself down this thing. Like, what if it happened? What, what, what could I do to stop myself? I would be out of control. It could just happen. Yeah, that's the kind of thing that I would think about. Like, my God, this could be terrible. Um, I, I could, I could definitely die. Definitely could die um, because of this well. And it's ridiculous. I, I, it's funny because, as I said, my mother went back to this house, and um, I always wondered about that well. I wanted to ask her, like, as in a grown-up, could you go and look at the well? She took some pictures, um, but the people who live there now have changed the house. Like they've moved things around, they built additional buildings, they, and they did not have my grandmother's green thumb. So the garden is this complete mess and the house has all these additional structures. And, and I said, honestly, I looked at the pictures once and I thought, I really, I don't want to see this anymore because I have this whole house and the garden in my head and I don't want to know that it doesn't exist anymore. You know, I mean, it's important that, it, that it's still there sort of, but when, when she came back with these pictures, and they, these people had put, like, dog pens in the back. They were, like, these big cages that they had packs of dogs living and chickens and all kinds of stuff. And I just said, like, I don't want to know much more about it because there's something incredibly sad to me about the fact that this place doesn't exist anymore. I mean, it exists, but it doesn't exist in the form that I remember. I can't go back, and there would be my grandmother, you know, in her floral print dress and her gloves out in the garden and my grandfather in his white coat doesn't exist anymore. So I, d I just don't want to know. I don't want to know. You know, it exists in my head. And that's the most important thing. It's like exists in this map. And, uh, you know, I'm sorry, I'm feeling kind of emotional about this. But the fact is like this was a very happy time in my life. It was probably the, the the highlight of my childhood was the 18 months that I lived in Lahore, Pakistan, with my grandparents. I didn't have a lot of friends, you know, as was often true when I was a little kid because I was, you know, a weirdo stranger um, from other countries. But um, this particular house, it was a place where I had some friends and I also had my place for my imagination because I could... I could conjure up all kinds of things and all kinds of possibilities. And, and I had free run of this place. And it was big and there were always things to discover because it was, you know, it was sort of mysterious and it had um, weird rooms and pathways and, and stuff like that. So it means quite a lot to me. And I don't feel like I've done it justice. My memory isn't completely, isn't completely intact, of course, because I'm becoming old and decrepit, but also... Um, you know, I'm talking to you. I think if I sat down and really thought about this some more, I could, I could do more detail. So you might want to think about that too. Um, okay, so that is my memory map for today. Um, and uh, let's, let's just talk about it. Tell me a bit about your experience. What was this like? Did you remember a lot of details? Does visualizing it help you? Like, I, that's what I find. I find like, 
sometimes it's really hard to find the relationships of sizes, particularly when you're small. Like when you're small, things seem really huge. And then you try and say, like, where did this fit next to that? And I think it's also like an interesting thing just in developing your drawing skills, this kind of memory stuff, because you have to think about what sits next to what, which is something we often think about when we're drawing, like what's the connection between this thing and that thing. Or when you're drawing from your imagination or your memory, you know, you have to you have these blank spaces and you think or you make something really big and then you realize it couldn't it has to be smaller for it to fit into this thing. It's um it's weird. It's interesting. Um so yeah, so that's my thoughts for today. Um, I hope that you've enjoyed drawing with me today. Next week, we're going to do a different kind of drawing exercise. We're going to draw I'm going to allot a 20-minute period, and we're going to draw 10 things in those 20 minutes. And we'll see. I mean, maybe I'll come up with a list of what those things can be, or maybe it'll be up to you to draw them. I don't know. We'll see. Um... It might also be interesting to do some blind contour drawing from imagination. I'll explain what that means next time. But um, yeah, so that'll be next time. Next, our next experience will be, and this is this is a list on the on the prompt list. You will find this if you go to this free drawing prompts thing. Um, you will uh, you will f find this. I think I, I forget what number it is. Forty one maybe. I'll post whatever it's going to be. Don't worry about it in the meantime. Get this list because it's fun to have, and we will work from it, but I will tell you what it is. So um, let's see what, what all of you have to say about it. What does Janet, Janet have to say here? She says, mine is more like a psychological map, a drawing of the house I grew up with people making certain memorable comments. Oh, interesting. So, so, so it's about like what you remember of the place, but also where you might have heard certain things or certain parts of the house which you associate with certain people. Interesting. Um, uh, what else? Karen says, proportions were hard to do, but the more I drew, the more I remembered. I'd love to go back and see how my memory compares to the real thing. Interesting. Here's a thing I did a couple years ago. I went to Google Street View. You know what that is, right? It's a component of Google Maps. And I went and I looked at the street view of various houses I'd lived in as a kid. A lot of them hadn't changed that much. And it's interesting to see them. First of all, everything is like way more smaller and kind of more pathetic than I remember it. Um, but that's interesting way to sort of add um, a layer of reality onto your memories. Marilyn is drawing the route to her grammar school. Many houses, but only including my friend's houses. Yeah, like how many houses could you remember? Can you remember like that crazy old lady or the barking dog and those kinds of things? Lots of bits to remember. Um, and the more you think about it, the more you can start to piece them together. You can piece them together. What did Thistle do? I visited my grandmother's house as an adult and I was amazed at how tiny it really was. Yeah, that would be interesting. That's another reason why I don't want to go back. You know, I don't want to compromise my memory, and then I don't want to blend real the current reality with memory. I like it being pure. So this map is nice to have. I'm going to keep working on it and keep thinking. So, all right. Um, Corinne says, it was the roaming in the woods memories. Could you draw a map of that? Could you remember the map of the woods? That's interesting, too. Um, Becky drew her childhood home on Melrose Hill. Excellent. So... Yeah, so share what you share with these drawings if you'd like. Share them in the schoolyard, share them um, in on social media, and share what you got out of it. I'd love to know. Really interesting. All right, see you next week um, again, noon Eastern Standard Time on Thursday. I'll be here. You can draw with me if you like, or you can just listen to me drone on about something. Um, it should be a fun experience. And in the meantime, keep drawing. See you then. <laughs>